Hello kids, uh, today we will be working on unit uh, 6 of IGCSE physics which is uh, energy transformation and uh, uh, types of energy and work, right? Uh, so we'll uh, go to the first subtopic which is uh <coughs> energy and work. So uh, what is work? And, and uh, by this we understand that when we're talking about energies in this chapter which is energy transformation, we will be uh, restricting ourselves first uh, to the moving objects, right? So uh, let's just say uh, there is an object, right, uh, which is mass m, and there is a force applied to it, uh, which made it move uh, it over a distance, over a certain length, right, d, and, and now this is here uh, where the object m is now, right, this is the final position, so let's call this uh, initial, and let's call this as final position, right, so uh, if we say what, uh, how much uh, work was done on this object to move it from uh, point A to point B, uh, we're going to call this as work done uh, would be equal to uh, the distance covered D multiplied by uh, the force uh, that was applied on the object, right? So this is a basic formula for work where uh, work can be easily uh, denoted as uh, the force that does a certain amount of work on an object to make it move over a distance. Now understand that uh, that uh, this uh, needs to have a certain angle in mind. So work, uh, usually when we talk about work, right, so it is uh, always uh, considered as uh, the parallel uh, to D, right? If it's making a certain angle, for example, if uh, F is over here, and this is the D covered, right? So we have to consider this theta, and in that case, at uh, work, uh, right? Work, work at a certain uh, angle. Uh, then it is work. Uh, we denote by theta is going to be uh, F cos theta multiplied by t, right? That is again f into cos theta uh, multiplied by t. So this is how you can uh, calculate the work done at a certain angle and this is uh, when uh, f and d are uh, parallel to each other, right? So that's what you need to understand. When they're parallel, when they're in the same direction, uh, that's when we take uh, f into d and when it is at a certain angle, then we have to understand that we have to use this formula uh, f cos theta d, right? Where cos theta uh, is the angle compensation uh, for this force at a certain angle upon which we uh, usually call it as the component of a vector. So this is going to be uh, fx, right? And uh, that is in the direction of d, right? It's the x component along the x-axis. So always put d on the x-axis and put the angle at a certain force and you can calculate the work done. So uh, units of work are uh, joules, right? And it is denoted by uh, capital J. So uh, it would be, uh, let's say, work is equal to force multiplied by distance, right? So force is in newtons, distance is in meters. So we call this as joules, right? And that's uh, what is energy uh, as well, right? So now we move into what energy is. So energy is actually uh, the ability to do work. So what is energy? Energy is the uh, ability to do work, right? So that is what energy is. And if we say so, then we have to understand that energy is actually equal to the amount of work done. Right, so E is equal to W. So again, the units are going to be, uh, sorry, the units, uh, units for energy uh, are joules, right? So uh, let's just say, uh, for an example, uh, let's take an example, for uh, example, right? Uh, for example, <coughs> a force of 
20 newtons moved a mass any mass of uh, 10 kilograms over a distance of uh, 10 meters right uh, what is work done right so in that case we will go with uh, w is equal to f into d where f uh, is equal to 20 newtons and d is equal to 10 meters so that is going to be uh, 20 into 10 giving you 200 joules right that's now on the work done so that's the energy also change uh, during this motion right so this is how uh, a work can be calculated for any uh, case at a certain angle again uh, you will have to incorporate cos theta if uh, something w if the angle was also there then the cos theta would also be uh, incorporated in this case since they are parallel to each other then theta is equal to uh, zero degrees and that means cos uh, theta is going to be one so we are going to uh, again we also have cos theta over here but that incorporates equal to one so we don't write it over here when they are parallel to each other the general formula for uh, work done is actually uh, this one right this is the this is the actual real formula for work being done uh, that is in the direction of uh, D so you you measure the angle from uh, and, and the direction of the motion you change uh, uh, this normal equation to f cos theta d and calculate the work done at a certain angle that you can do uh, even for zero degrees which is parallel case and you get cos theta being one and uh, hence we we simply write this f into d which is the shorter version of the equation which has cos theta d in it right okay that's for work now right and now we're going to move quickly into the next topic types of energies uh, this is a quick run because I'll be covering three units all together as they're e uh, you know uh, connected so I'm not going to take individual uh, videos for each unit I'm going to give a fast run on to it right so type of energies so we just discussed what energies are right energy and it was uh, ability to do work right and that could be uh, that means uh, the energy uh, changes right what about energy changes so let's just say uh, we have uh, w is equal to f into d where we uh, call this as uh, energy is equal to uh, f into d and we also know f is equal to m into a uh, for example this is our mass m it moved from here under the action of a force so it must have accelerated right from point a to point uh, b right and this is now uh, the final condition right so initial so in that case we must have some certain value for vi and vf which is the initial speed and the final speed right so we can also break a is equal to vf minus vi divided by time the time it took f uh, for the object to move from a to b right so that is what uh, energy is going to be we can just simply uh, generate this as m into a into d right and over here we can replace a as well m into vf minus vi by t into uh, d right so uh, that is what we were going to have right energy right now uh, if you if you understand this uh, we we actually have to understand that we uh, don't have this uh, uh, initial uh, state or, or you can say we have to replace this time as well now this time uh, we don't have it over here right we didn't have time previously over here we were not calculating time in terms of energy so we have to get rid of time uh, in some uh, way right uh, so to do that uh, we, we actually uh, have this uh, energy uh, due to motion right so if you do that uh, uh, sorry, and that is equal to 1 by 2 mv square right so where uh, the velocity is going to be uh, power 2 why because as you can see over here t by t is what v is right so and this is also delta v right 
uh, is equal to uh, sorry there's not enough space okay and if we consider the movement of the object to be uh, uh, you can say uh, without uh, much changes so we can simply go with the f or, or the final velocity or the summed up velocity so we can also say is equal to vf minus vi so delta v into this is going to lead you to mv square right so uh, this is the uh, motion where we call this ek uh, right so uh, ek or we can say kinetic energy right energy due to motion is equal to e k is equal to 1 by 2 mv square whatever the uh, constant velocity of the object is now uh, mind it the one i brought it out this one this is also kinetic energy but that's for the change in the speed usually that's not the case that you get in your exams so we're just going to restrict ourselves to uh, you, you know a constant uh, motion or constant velocity and that's what we're going to use over here right uh, we can also calculate the changes in energy from vf to vi but you have to understand you have to incorporate that in this uh, s uh, constant velocity then we have uh, potential energy or uh, in your IGCSE book is uh, gravitational potential energy which is EP right and that is MGH where uh, again if you do this then uh, if you if you recognize this point that if this is the M and it falls down right from position A over a distance of this D where D is now translated into height so there is the height right uh, I'm just going to raise this so if you do this again uh, f into d then d is actually uh, h right in this case and this f is going to be the weight of the object uh, with which it is falling so it's w into h and we do know that w is equal to m into g so this is going to be m g h right so this is how you get a uh, ep formula so uh, there are two energies now i'm just going to summarize that ek which is kinetic energy that is 1 by 2 mv square just remember this formula I'm just going to put a star over here right and then we have EP which is mgh that is also your star formula and then we have W is equal to uh, F cos theta into D that is also your star energy and for uh, uh, for a uh, parallel case, right? Just a minute. Oh, not. Just a minute. Okay. I get to scribble. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but perhaps it glitched. Okay, and for a uh, parallel case. Uh, cos theta is equal to 1 as theta is equal to 0 degrees hence we get w is equal to f into t which is the normal case that is also your star equation right so these four uh, equations you must uh, recognize and remember for this unit that's the only thing you will get uh, because the next questions the, the, the detail or the structure questions will require uh, the conversion of these energies into one another so uh, let's get into the next uh, you know a topic right which is uh, transfer of uh, energy by nature right so we can transfer different types of energies uh, into uh, one thing for example uh, we've got uh, by nature uh, uh, types of energies right so uh, number one we've got the most uh, simple and the basic one which is thermal energy right and that is uh, the heat uh, that we 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 know that we receive it by sun and you know uh, heaters or radiators you know thermal energy flowing in and out burning coil you know coal and stuff so then we have uh, electrical energy that we use in our houses right 
that is electrical energy then we have number three uh, we have uh, you can say uh, gravitational potential energy and we usually convert electrical energy into gravitational potential energy uh, in terms of uh, you know filling our water tanks in the houses so we give uh, the motor uh, some electrical energy it does work on water and uh, you know refills the tank on top which is uh, change in height uh, causing increase in uh, gravitational potential energy so hence uh, we will convert electrical energy into gravitational uh, potential energy I will give certain examples in a moment and then we have number four uh, kinetic energy right and these are by nature right and number five that is due to motion right uh, we can call this height we can call this uh, motion uh, we can also call electrical potential energy as uh, movement of uh, electrons and that is what a uh, current is right due to uh, movement of current or what we call as uh, charges that is electrons uh, then we have uh, nuclear energy right and that is due to uh, unstable atoms breaking right when they break uh, they release a lot of energy that's what we call as nuclear energy right nuclei of the atoms when they break they, they release these uh, uh, radiation right uh, we, 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 we cannot just say breaking we can just uh, say uh, unstable atoms or uh, nuclei right that's when they release this uh, nuclear energy and then uh, we have number five uh, number six uh, wind energy right and that is usually translated in terms of uh, kin kinetic energy uh, I'm going to use the symbols available in the book EK that is usually taken as with with wind speed right and the mass flow rate of of the air so these are types of energies uh, by their nature uh, then we have uh, other energy sources number seven uh, as sound energy right uh, that is also calculated in joules right and uh, number eight we've got uh, light energy that we calculate in terms of photons right and this can be intensity of sound how much intense the sound was right how much energy it would transfer that's uh, closer to it right so I've just given you relations of what what are the important features of these uh, types of energies in nature and we can actually convert one into uh, the other so let's let's do that for a moment let's say I just give you an example uh, uh, you can say your desk lamp right so desk lamp how does the desk lamp work so you get uh, gravitational potential energy GPE right or uh, EP in short that uh, of I'm going to say dams from the dams is converted into uh, electrical energy right and for this you need to have certain uh, you know uh, background knowledge of what these uh, uh, mean uh, that is electrical energy that is due to turbines on dams that we we put on them right and that electrical energy is transferred to your uh, light bulb where uh, <coughs> uh, sorry it is converted into uh, light and heat right uh, and that is the lamp or light bulb right so this is how these uh, energies are converted that uh, the gravitational potential energy of the water which is flowing I'm just going to make a diagram right this is a dam right so uh, when the water is there so it flows out there are turbines in there right I'm just going to make this uh, then the turbines water flows out right so uh, these turbines are then uh, given the positive and the negative and that uh, is sent to uh, your houses right or the transmission line 
transmission right and these are the dams right so uh, when the water flows down on the turbines turbines rotate they convert the potential energy into kinetic energy uh, I, I actually missed the kinetic energy over here but in general we can simply uh, say that that's the gravitational potential energy converted directly into electrical energy uh, using these turbines uh, as the turbines rotate and that is sent to your houses through the trans transmission lines which is then converted into light and heat when you light up the bulb because the bulbs do get heated up so uh, another example <coughs> would be uh, you can say uh, uh, yeah uh, let's let's talk about speakers right what does the speaker does right, that's another unique case so uh, you have uh, a sound system right so you get uh, electrical energy and that is in sound system converts into uh, you can say uh, sound energy and how that is through speakers right so you get to feel that uh, energy and that means uh, bigger speakers requ would require more electrical energy and that's what we do know that for larger speakers we need to actually have la uh, you know amplifiers to increase the sound or, or the sound energy being produced required by the by the speakers and if we don't put uh, an adequate amplifier at the back of uh, uh, a large speaker then we are not going to get much sound out of it right so that's a very uh, unique example then uh, we have uh, let's say solar panels what they do they take uh, light energy right from sun uh, they convert it into uh, electrical energy and that electrical energy running water pump right let's say if that's uh, water pump was run on solar panels is converted into GPE of the pump so this is the motor right uh, this is the solar panel and that's again what the, what the job of the solar panel is right to convert it into right so this is how these these uh, sequences can be built for different energy transfers so many examples out there you can check out the internet you can check on the book uh, there uh, there's interesting information available in the book so if you go through that that's that's how it is so uh, we did the conversion uh, as well so I'm just go going to uh, uh, remove this page right because we won't be needing it I've written everything right here along with the examples now uh, the most fun part which is the uh, Sankey diagram right so what is uh, the Sankey diagram so uh, Sankey diagram is a diagram that gives the energy conversion diagrams right right so energy uh, conversion uh, diagrams now uh, one one type of energy that I did miss over here was actually uh, I'm going to come over here let's put another one right okay let me remove the line delete this that's right uh, number nine as well in the scribbling over here we also have number nine which is the chemical energy right batteries or uh, during burning right and how burning because that burning is actually conversion of chemical energy into thermal energy right where we uh, have a chemical reaction that creates thermal energy right so that's what we uh, missed over here so we're gonna incorporate that over here now because I was going to give you an example for that uh, let's go with energy conversion right so uh, let's say uh, we talk about combustion uh, engine uh, right so that's the let's say for a car right that's the car engine so what it does uh, it does uh, chemical let's point out the steps so chemical reaction or what we say combustion right that combustion causes uh, thermal energy that thermal energy is then uh, used as uh, you know kinetic energy right that's what the engine does it it takes that thermal energy converts into mechanical work movement and 
number four that kinetic energy uh, is further also used to uh, charge the battery and plus move car right that is the kinetic energy right the movement of the car anyway so this this is how it works so let's uh, make uh, and also uh, we do get over here number five we get uh, heat losses right some of the heat is uh, lost while while running the engine which is we cool it down if we don't it will engine will heat up and it will burn off so we have to cool it down that means we're losing some of the heat energy which is not converted into kinetic energy uh, plus we get the sound as well right we don't get light but we do get the sound of the engine so there's a uh, sound loss right uh, sound energy loss so that is also some loss in which uh, energy is converted into sound right so i'm just going to make a sankey diagram in which uh, i'm just going to uh, draw one big uh, 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 diagram uh, engine and how we do this let's say this is the engine which is the uh, thermal energy uh, from combustion right and that is what we call as hundred percent as a whole out of which right uh, we uh, get some of it let's say uh, we say 20% uh, uh, kinetic energy, right? That is the movement of the car. And then we also have, uh, sorry, we need to make these arrows go farther apart so that they appear to have, right? So let's, let's call this one, uh, two arrows, right? And right I'm just going to distribute it into three arrows where three of the energies are being uh, used right don't mind the arrowheads they might be a little odd to look at right so this is what we call as kinetic energy which is let's say 20% uh, then 15% uh, is the electrical conversion right through generator right uh, by generator by engine and uh, through exhaust right we what we get through exhaust heat loss and sound energy and that is going to the remaining because if this was 100 you subtract 20 percent of the kinetic energy the movement we get 15 percent of this so that is going to be uh, about 65% uh, loss, right? So uh, you have to understand that this is the amount of loss that is there for a typical engine. I'm just figuring that out. Uh, this is not uh, the actual numbers, but yes, uh, for petrol engines, the maximum efficiency is just 20%. So you need to understand that these, uh, uh, you know, fossil fuel or fuel run engines, they, they are not efficient. They only convert 20% of the uh, energy that is being released in terms of thermal energy, which is lost in air, uh, in terms of cooling or through exhaust or radiator, right? I'm just going to uh, put a radiator here as well, right? Uh, radiators. So they also try to cool the engine down, which is not used anywhere. So it is lost into the air uh, or into the environment. So that's a uh, heat loss. So that's the Sankey diagram <coughs> for your uh, radiators. Now uh, let, let's uh, do a, a Sankey diagram for a bulb, right? Bulb, uh, light bulb, right? Let's call it light bulb, right? So if uh, we provide 100% uh, electrical energy, right? And that electrical energy, oh, by the way, uh, this is by generator and we can say stored uh, in batteries. And what battery store, that's the chemical energy again, right? We do a chemical reaction and we, we store that in terms of uh, chemical energy, right? Okay, <coughs> so if we provide 100% chemical energy, and uh, again, uh, the fan moves, so there's going to be uh, a huge amount of uh, kinetic energy, as well as we're going to have losses in terms of uh, we get 
sound and heat right the fan motor heats up so that's the loss and that's the use right so that's the amount that was used and that's the amount that was lost so you can identify what the you, you, you know it was happening so we can say that uh, if this was 70 percent uh, then this is going to be 30 percent heat and sound loss right so <coughs> this is how sankey diagrams are made you can look for some examples on the internet these are just basic examples make sure that these heights are well organized unfortunately for for my pen i know i cannot make very accurate diagrams so i did not uh, space them up properly uh, obviously 65 percent is supposed to have more space more white and this 15 percent should be less white uh, compared to this 20 and 65 so uh, these need to be comparable these percentages should be visible through the width of this arrow but uh, as i said for the ease of work on this uh, notebook i just drew them uh, without uh, uh, you can say uh, these are i would say not to scale right uh, diagrams so just to clarify that these are not to scale diagrams you have to make them to scale if required uh, by the question if a rough diagram is suggested then you can make it but as of good practice have uh, proper distribution between them now uh, energy resources that's the next uh, topic uh, of this uh, that's the next unit in this uh, sequence as i said i'll be covering three units uh, in a single go until uh, work and efficiency to cover this first block which is the general physics so uh, we have uh, renewable uh, versus uh, non-renewable right and I'm just going to uh, first go with renewable energy. So uh, renewable energy, uh, uh, let's let's define this. Uh, naturally available, right? Does not require. Uh, production by man point number one right point number two and point number three uh, can be reused or uh, let's call this or harvested right uh, compared to this if we talk about uh, non-renewable they are also naturally available right uh, again uh, they do not require production but uh, most of the time uh, needs to be uh, extracted right you need to extract them uh, from somewhere extracted from sources right uh, for example fossil fuels you have to take them out uh, from from the ground up uh, and cannot be uh, reused or uh, re harvested right so uh, if we uh, define this then the examples would be uh, very simple for example number one sunlight uh, that is for light plus thermal right these two uh, types of energies we we get from sunlight and we don't create sunlight it is there so we we get that every day so we can use solar panels to harvest them so uh, uh, we can use uh, solar panels or uh, solar uh, thermal generators right so those are generators which work on solar energy concentrated on on a uh, thermal design electrical system right uh, it's a new type of uh, er, you know energy conversion method which is now available uh, then we also have salt uh, baths and stuff okay uh, number two we've got wind energy uh, we don't drive the wind the wind is always there uh, so it is available to us we can actually use uh, ek for it that is one by two mv square right we don't have any formula for for solar light we just give it uh, the power units how much power is being generated by the panels 
uh, nothing else we don't uh, write any specific formula for this because uh, again solar panel calculations are very advanced uh, for your level so we're not going to go into any quantum mechanics over here so we're just going to uh, keep it as an example and take power into account which we will discuss in the next unit so wind energy we can calculate actually that is uh, the mass flow rate the amount of wind that passed and at what speed the wind was passing so we can get the electrical uh, energy or, or sorry the kinetic energy which we can translate into electrical energy depending upon the losses so that's uh, number two uh, number three is uh, geothermal I mean through volcanic activities uh, uh, volcanic uh, activity right uh, also from uh, geysers right natural geysers that that uh, evolve hot springs and stuff so that's geothermal energy which is also available it's uh, uh, available every time we can we don't need to produce this it's already there so uh, that's what we get in terms of these examples uh, so for uh, non-renewable the number one would be uh, fossil fuel right <coughs> we extract them we burn them and uh, we we get that uh, from fossils oils gases right so this is what we get and we we use them in terms of combustion to get thermal energy uh, what else uh, do we get these other than these fossil fuels we have uh, uh, you can say uh, number two uh, coal which is available as uh, rock coal right uh, that is there graphite is there so many examples are there so rock coal is also there we mine it out right from mines uh, these are stones which we, we we can burn in terms of coal it's very compressed uh, type right then there are other uh, examples as well you can look into other examples and, and go into the detail of this as I said I will keep this video short so these are just few examples which are usually used uh, uh, in your uh, 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 context then we also have uh, chemical energy which is reactive in nature we may uh, be able to reuse that uh, but we do not classify those as renewable sources because uh, batteries again uh, they deteriorate over time so we can have chemical energy over here uh, chemical reactions but I am not going to place that in either of these two because uh, that is uh, somewhere let's say uh, batteries so they convert chemical so what batteries do I'm just going to put them in the middle so if this is a battery it converts it uh, energy into uh, chemical reaction right chemical reaction gives you uh, electrical energy right right and again uh, if we want to do uh, this is what we call as uh, discharging and that this is going to be uh, again chemical reaction that is going to be chemical energy right so uh, we can call this as discharging when the battery is discharging and this is what we call as charging so I'm not going to place this uh, anywhere uh, both and these or these two I'm not going to differentiate because it's a very complex matter to discuss uh, batteries so uh, we're just going to classify this as uh, a conversion cycle for chemical battery right so chemical batteries they 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 run chemical reactions and give you electrical energy uh, once you connect them and uh, if you give them electrical energy they will uh, uh, undo or, or go in reverse of their chemical reaction and will uh, uh, store that energy I as chemical energy right so this is uh, how the, this uh, special type of energy is worked uh, in terms of batteries right so uh, that's uh, the energy resources and I've differentiated renewable and non-renewable I'm not going to solve any question I will solve a, a model question for work and power which is the next uh, and the last uh, unit in this topic let me just look at the time so we've got still 20 minutes to uh, pull through uh, for one hour session right so we'll go quickly into power so what is power right uh, ability to do work for a uh, sorry a specific time right that means power 
it is going to be work divided by time and we do know work uh, is equal to energy right so we can also say that power is equal to energy provided divided by the time it takes uh, to deliver that energy so uh, the units would be uh, joules per second right and that is what we call as watts right so uh, the unit uh, for power is watts and it's represented by capital W right so uh, now let's do an example uh, a motor uh, raised as I said that I'll be doing the numerical examples in the last topic raised uh, water from ground right using uh, electrical uh, energy of 65,000, 67,000 joules uh, to a height of uh, 10 meters, right? That's the first thing. How much water did it fill up right that's question number one also uh, calculate the power of a motor pump used if it took one minute right so that's a big question I'm going to read the question again a motor raised water from the ground using electrical energy of 67,000 joules to a height of 10 meters right so over here uh, we have uh, height and this is uh, E and how much water did it fill up that means we're referring to mass right and also calculate the power which is going to be P uh, when it took the time which is going to be T so I'm just going to uh, write these values so we have energy which is 67,000 joules remember if you've got kilojoules then you have to convert it one uh, kilojoule is equal to 1000 joules right kilo means uh, 1000 so always convert kilojoules into joules when you're working with uh, power because power is usually uh, power is actually calculated in terms of seconds so seconds and joules are there so you need to convert uh, uh, kilojoules into joules to be able to calculate power don't calculate power for kilojoules that would be totally incorrect right okay now you've got energy uh, you've got height which is uh, 10 meters then we have time which is uh, one minute that is going to be 60 seconds right as I said we need to work on uh, seconds so first of all uh, we need to calculate the mass so we do know when uh, let's say if this is now I'm just going to draw uh, a simple example here's your motor pump right which is uh, filling out a tank on top right this is the tank on top which is just going to fill up right so if this is the height right this is using uh, 67 thousand joules so how much mass is there now as you can see this is height over a height so we need to understand we're talking about uh, GPE, right? G gravitational potential energy, which is EP is equal to MGH, right? We have the value for energy, which is this. So we're going to go with 67,000 joules on this side, right? And uh, we need to calculate the mass. We need we know the value of G. So G is equal to 9.8 meter per second, which is gravitational uh, acceleration, right? Uh, that is going to be 9.8 into height which is actually uh, in the question uh, that is given as 10 meters right so we've got 10 meters so uh, it is going to be 67,000 divided by 9.8 multiplied by 10 is equal to mass uh, right now let's let me just pull out my calculator <coughs> now that is going to be 67,000 divided by 9.8 right further divide by 10 so uh, 
the mass is actually going to be 683.67 kilograms and why kilograms because I'm working in SI units so when when you use SI units uh, you can be easily sure about the outcoming units of, of the numerical value you have right so that is why I always work in SI units so that you know the unit of the quantity that you're uh, calculating instead of getting confused uh, that what kind of unit is going to be there right so as you can see I'm using meters for uh, length all length measurements including the gravitation acceleration energy and the joule which also corresponds to SI uh, unit that is going to be uh, in uh, uh, you know uh, SI units so that is going to be in terms of kilograms meters and sec uh, you know seconds right so that's the mass that's the first part and the next part is also calculate the power so we do know that uh, power is equal to uh, uh, energy over time right and in this case uh, we are supposed to calculate power the energy is 67,000 joules and divided by uh, uh, 60 seconds that's the time so again we're going to do this calculation which is 67,000 divided by 60 seconds so that is going to be uh, one 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 six point six six watts or we can say one 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 six point seven watts as it's a repeating figure right this I can also write as a kilo so if I take these three decimal places it would be one point one uh, one six seven kilowatts right so I just moved the decimal place from here to here right so this is uh, your value for power right that's the power of the motor that you would require to do this job in, in 60 seconds to fill up this much amount of water in the tank right now moving on to the last topic of this uh, unit which is the efficiency and now I'm going to take the same example from here right uh, let me just uh, zoom it out a little bit right now I'm just going to take this example uh, as a whole from here I'm going to copy this I'm going to paste it here right now that's the power and in, in our terms right now I'm just going to uh, sorry just a minute my bad okay <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, happens okay yeah using the pen is, is quite kind of difficult all right uh, we are now what if now I'm just going to uh, say this what if uh, motor used uh, uh, let's say uh, 85,000 joules instead of 67 joules uh, in reality right for example uh, what is the efficiency of motor right now over here we are now concerned that in this case this is an idealistic case we did not discuss any losses we did not talk about losses where it's gonna get lost and we do know what motors run they create sound and they create heat so uh, the losses uh, are there so we did not calculate any loss over here it was an ideal case so let's just say we put we hook up uh, an energy calculator with that right we we, do, we take a digital uh, electrical meter and connect it uh, to this uh, motor and see how much energy it actually consumed uh, then our target value and that was let's say 85,000 joules so uh, we will call that right uh, that is the input energy the energy that it consumed right that is 85,000 joules and the uh, output energy the energy uh, that the water actually does have when uh, it went up that was 67,000 joules right uh, so or this is what we call as used or supplied right uh, instead of just calling as input or output these two other words can also be used for this right so uh, efficiency is actually uh, and that's a very common formula for efficiency for anything that is uh, output divided by input right uh, that is going to be 
67,000 divided by 85,000, right? So uh, again, this is a multiple of, uh, sorry, I forgot, into, let's say, 100% of this. So this would be 100% multiplied by, right? So that is uh, going to be 67,000 divided by 85,000, and that is uh, into 100, 78.82%. Right? That's the efficiency that we will call this as percentage efficiency. Right? So uh, that that is how you calculate the efficiency of a motor, or uh, you can work it back as well. You can look for some other examples to have a deep view. Uh, this is just a brief uh, working of this uh, in terms of uh, a crash course. Uh, so I'm not going to go into much detailed example. I just gave one example and I uh, did some, uh, you know, there. Now, uh, one uh, s reasoning question that is asked, uh, name uh, the uh, nature of energy sources, right? Or uh, just write the types of energy sources. So number one would be thermal because the motor does get uh, heated up once it's running. And the other is sound energy, right? These are the two energy losses that you will have in which this uh, rest of uh, the percentage of the energy was lost. That would be this much, right? So we can just say what is the total amount of energy lost in this case? Uh, that would be uh, if we minus this from 100. So that is going to be 21.176% uh, 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 energy loss. Right, that could be in these two portions. We now we don't know how much in each because we will need uh, then thermal sensors, the temperature sensors, and and the sound intensity sensors to identify how much uh, percentage energy individually these have. Uh, but uh, that's a complex case. But for your case, that's the lost energy. Right. Uh, I hope I was able to clarify some of the basic concepts of this uh, the T unit. And uh, the journal block is now concluded. If you have any uh, questions regarding the whole uh, general physics block, just uh, post in a question or let me know uh, through my WhatsApp or, or through uh, the comment section on the YouTube, and I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you.